Hello, my name is Marta Paraira and I am a radiologist at Hospital Universitari Muto Terrassa in Barcelona, Spain. A 77-year-old man was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and showed no complications until three months ago when he started having difficulty controlling his glycemia. The patient complained of weakness and unintentional weight loss of 10 kilos in the last two months. He had no history of alcohol abuse or gallstones. Here we see side by side two axial IV contrast enhanced CT images of the abdomen. In the image on the left, acquired during the portal phase, we can see that the pancreas has lost its lobular contour, denoted by the blue arrows, as well as a hypoattenuating halo at the pancreatic tail, shown by the yellow arrow. It is also important to note the lack of peripancreatic fat stranding and the absence of pancreatic duct dilation. The image on the right, obtained in the delayed phase, shows the enhancement of the peripancreatic halo, marked by the yellow arrow. Both images show dilation of bile ducts, marked by the blue square. Here we have two contrast-enhanced CT images in the coronal plane, again acquired in the portal phase on the left and in the delayed phase on the right, where the yellow arrows point to the enhancement of the dilated common bile duct wall. The yellow circle marks the enhancement of the pancreatic head. In addition, a soft tissue mass in the root of the mesentery can be visualized, represented by the blue circle. 20 days later, a contrast-enhanced MRI was performed. In these axial images, we can see the enhancement of the peripancreatic halo in the late phase, shown by the yellow arrows on the right image, compared to the image on the left, which was acquired in the arterial phase. Enhancement of the thickened common bile duct wall and the pancreatic parenchyma in the delayed phase can be seen on the coronal T1 weighted image on the left. In the image on the right, the white arrows show the pancreatic duct with multiple stenosis without significant pre-stenotic dilation. The blue arrowhead shows dilation of intrahepatic bile ducts. A soft tissue mass in the root of the mesentery is identified by the blue circle. In that axial T2 weighted image, we can see a moderate hyperintense enlarged pancreas that has lost the clefts, pointed by the blue arrow. A hypointense peripancreatic halo is also seen, marked by the yellow arrow. The white arrowhead points to the non-dilated pancreatic duct. Note also the absence of a significant peripancreatic hyperintensity. In the coronal MRCP image, we can better see stenosis of a long segment of the main pancreatic duct, with tapering of the upstream pancreatic duct pointed by the short white arrows. Also note the smooth tapered narrowing of the intrapancreatic common bile duct, shown by the short blue arrow with moderate proximal dilated bile ducts. We can see a focal narrowing in the proximal common hepatic duct marked by a yellow circle. In those images, we can see that the pancreas shows restricted diffusion, pointed by the blue arrows. The final diagnosis of this case was IgG4-related pancreatitis. Finding at cross-sectional imaging of a sausage-like pancreas without dilation of the main pancreatic duct and with a peripancreatic halo are highly suggestive of autoimmune pancreatitis. Extrapancreatic abnormalities at the time of presentation also strongly suggest IgG4-related disease. In our case, mild wall thickening of the extrahepatic bile duct and a soft tissue mass-like process in the root of the mesentery were findings that supported the diagnosis. High serum IgG4 levels and findings at EUs also supported the diagnosis. The three primary differential diagnoses were common bile duct cholangiocarcinoma, pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and acute pancreatitis. 
Common bile duct cholangiocarcinoma usually presents with substantial biliary dilation with an abrupt change in the caliber. There is also wall thickening which shows delayed enhancement at IV contrast enhanced CT and contrast enhanced MRI. Pancreatic adenocarcinoma typically appears as a hypoattenuating mass at CT. It is seen as a hypo-intense mass on FATSAT-T1 weighted image. On T2 weighted image, the signal intensity can be variable, but it tends to be slightly hypo-intense. Pancreatic adenocarcinoma shows hypo-enhancement after IV contest administration at CT and MRI, even in the late phase. The pancreatic duct is dilated proximal to the pancreatic adenocarcinoma, but is narrowed in autoimmune pancreatitis. Pancreatic adenocarcinoma and the focal form of autoimmune pancreatitis can show similar image findings, making it difficult to differentiate them. The involvement of other organs in autoimmune pancreatitis can help to establish the correct diagnosis. Acute pancreatitis is usually related to a history of alcohol consumption or gallstones. On IV contrast enhanced imaging, interstitial edematous pancreatitis usually presents with a heterogeneously enhanced pancreas. The margins of the pancreas are frequently indistinct due to the inflammation of the peripancreatic fat. Peripancreatic fat stranding and fat necrosis or acute peripancreatic fluid collections are helpful in the differential diagnosis of autoimmune pancreatitis. Take-home messages of this case are IgG4-related pancreatitis is part of a systemic disease which may involve any organ, most frequently the pancreas, biliary ducts, and salivary glands. Typical imaging findings are a sausage-like pancreas with a peripancreatic halo and a non-dilated pancreatic duct. The involvement of other organs, usually as soft tissue masses, favors the diagnosis. High serum IgG4 levels and tissue infiltration by IgG4 positive cells will help to establish the diagnosis. Response to a steroid therapy is the rule. Thank you for allowing us to present our case.